Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our 10.30 a.m. weekly live with Erica Halwell. Welcome, welcome. As I see her, there she is. Hi, Erica. Okay, go live with her. So happy National Nurses Day to all of our amazing nurses on the front lines. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good morning. I was just saying happy National Nurses Day. It's a wonderful opportunity for us to celebrate all these incredible nurses on the front line. 100%. How's your, it's amazing. How's your Wi-Fi? It's amazing that we only take one day. What? Okay, there you are. Your Wi-Fi was, was streaming a little bit. Okay, all right. Hi. Uh, hi, how are you feeling? I'm feeling better, thank you. Wonderful. Every day is a step in the right direction. Okay, that's great. So um, we're gonna continue on like we did from Saturday uh, and just keep adding a few more challenges, physical challenges to the practice, but always remembering that the reason we practice is not these physical postures, we're just using the physical postures to access and cultivate and strengthen and sustain our relationship with these greater tools of mindful action, of thoughtful action, of purposeful action. So we use the body to challenge our connection to these tools and to facilitate our connection to these tools. And I just want to keep reminding everyone of that. If you start to encounter postures, oh, my, I have a bad hip, I have a bad knee, I can't do that. You just sit, you just sit and you create a space holder for it and you breathe and you gaze. So we're gonna go over some of the particulars of the breath today because I can't hear anybody breathing and I can barely hear you breathing. And um, so it's, an, it's important to give you the details or explain the details that you're meant to be listening to when you're breathing. So we're going to breathe. Here, yeah, Christina, let's see if you can, if you can, we'll do like a fill in the blank, okay? So you're going to breathe exclusively through your nose. Very good. Okay, so you're going to breathe through your nose because you're keeping your mouth closed. Closed. Very good. This is like the best class ever. So you're breathing through your nose and you're keeping your mouth closed because it requires thought. It requires an extra bit of effort. So you're consciously holding the mouth closed without gripping in the jaw, without squeezing in the lips, and then you are directing. Oh, very good, Matt Tune. Very good. And then you're directing the breath. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> my niece is on. <laughs> I think your mom's on too. <laughs> um, my mom's everywhere these days. Um, <laughs> breathing through your nose. And then you want, when you're breathing, you want to create a sound a sound that's created at the base of the throat and the top of the chest that you can hear inside your body and outside of your body. So you want this sound to be a type of white noise machine that is like just a little bit muffling the regular chit chat that might regularly be going through your mind, that might normally be going through your mind. So you can notice that we've already used the mouth, the nose, and the ears. So what we're trying to do is direct all five of the senses toward the qualities of the breath because the mind uses the senses to measure reality. And all the time, through its measurements, it's qualifying, it's labeling, it's for, it's against. So instead of letting the mind run wild with the senses, we direct the senses toward the breathing. So mouth is closed, nose breathing with sound. And where do we breathe, Christina? What part of our body are we trying to fill up when we breathe? Our lungs. That's right. We're trying to fill the lungs completely, expanding the ribs, which are everywhere from the collarbones. Well, you can't see, but right to the base of the floating ribs. And you're trying to expand the lungs forward and upward, laterally out to the side and out in the back as well. And then also up under the chin. So there's a lot of room for expansion. The, the ribs are designed to stretch apart circumferentially. So we want to use the sense of touch to feel the lungs expanding and to not expand what when we breathe? 
don't expand, well, if we're breathing up into our lungs, where are we not breathing into? Where are we not breathing into? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Your you stomach. Know. Yay, good. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. Very good. I'm right. sorry. I got distracted reading all the notes, all the sweet good shout Stacey. out to you. Stacey got it. Stacey got it. There's, there's someone from Australia, by the way, which is What's really nice. It's, uh, it's 1230 p.m., uh, 1230 in the morning. A little bedtime yes. yoga. That's a that's a good time. That's a good time to practice yoga. Uh oh, am I frozen or are you frozen? Who's frozen? You're, You're frozen. Right. You're frozen. You're, you. Okay. No, so, it's, it's um, you. Okay. So we're going to begin. We're going to begin by utilizing some simple movements to get the breath moving, to get our sense organs interested in the breathing as a way to keep the mind on the breathing. And if you think like, oh, is she going to talk about the breathing the whole time? I can't take it. Yes. <laughs> Yoga is a breathing practice. It is. If you've heard otherwise, spread the new rumor because the new rumor is the old truth. So what we're trying to get at here is redefining our relationship to the breath, redefining our ability to notice where the mind goes and instead choosing to place it somewhere beneficial, which is in this moment and in fresh life energy coming in. And then, um, oh yes, they're distracting. The notes are so distracting. Once we start practicing, please stop writing messages because- But by the way, thank you for the kindness and all the, all the high praise for Erica and my husband, and it's very, very sweet. Um, but you won't be able to see Erica if you're sending messages. Hi from Monica, wow. All over the world here. I want to go there. Welcome, welcome to Erica's yoga class. You guys are okay. gonna love this. Okay, great. So when we start practicing, try to just do your practice and not send messages, but we'll come back to the messages at the end of class and answer any questions or anything. I'll tell you what movie I'm gonna watch later whatever you want to know. Okay, so let's start. Let's start on our hands and knees. So go back to your mat. I'm actually not going to get on my mat yet. But you're going to get onto your hands and knees. And maybe I will. It's too far away. You feel the wrists under the shoulders. So Christina, make sure you can hear me. It's a little bit of a different warm up than we usually do. Wrists under the shoulders, knees under the hips, pull the belly in, pull the ribs in. And we're just going to move the right hand six inches to the right. So just move it right out to the right six inches. Micro bend the right arm. And you're going to thread your left arm, palm face up behind the right wrist. So I'm laying the back of my left arm on the floor, just behind my right wrist. Yeah, all the way down. Keep going. Head on the floor. Keep going. Yes. Now pull your right outer hip back so the hips stay level and aligned. Maybe getting a little bit of a stretch in the left side of the body. If you're very comfortable, you can plug your right arm into its socket and just start to twist a little bit up to the ceiling. Breathe in, filling the chest, the ribs, the upper back. Breathe out, drawing the waist in on all sides. Mindful not to let the butt go back toward the heels. Keep the butt right on top of the knees. Good, push the right hand down. Inhale, come back to center. Line up, wrists under shoulders, and we'll do one round of cat-cow here. Tuck your toes, spread the seat, drop the belly, inhale, arch the back and look up. Tops of the feet on the floor, from the belly drawing in, the tailbone tucking, round and look underneath you. Then inhale, come to a flat back again, and we're gonna do the other side. Move your left hand out to the left, six inches. Bend your left elbow slightly out to the side. Thread the right arm all the way out to the left. Some of you will be able to line your right shoulder up with your left knee. You can lay your head on the floor and just start to twist the chest up to the ceiling. Keep your hips over your knees. Keep your navel drawn to your spine. Inhale fully and exhale fully. Press your left hand down. Inhale, come back to center. Hands and knees. And exhale. Tuck 
the toes under, spread the seat, drop the belly, inhale, arch the back and look up, tops of the feet on the floor, exhale, hollow and round and look toward your belly. One more time, tuck your toes, spread your seat, arch your back and look up, tops of the feet on the floor, exhale, hollow and round. Come to a neutral spine as you inhale. Widen your knees, toes to touch, and as you exhale, press back toward child's pose. I just have to put my hair up because it's a disaster. Keep your knees wide, let the belly and the chest drop between your knees. Crawl your arms all the way forward, turn the palms to face up. And then if you can, only if you can, bend the elbows and bring your hands on your back. So you're inching the underside of the elbows forward and you're melting your heart to the floor. Where your fingertips are touching behind your back, mm -hmm. see if you can breathe into that space between the shoulder blades. Inhale fully and exhale fully. One more. Inhale fully and exhale fully. Reach the hands back to the floor. Inhale, rock up hands and knees and we'll cat cow again. The entire practice is basically variations on cat cow. So tuck the toes, spread the seat, drop the belly, arch the back and look up. Tops of the feet on the floor, pull the navel in, hollow out the belly and look toward your navel. Tuck the toes, spread the seat. Drop the belly, melt the ribs, and look up. Tops of the feet on the floor. From the tailbone, dropping through your legs, hollowing and rounding. Good. Inhale to a flat back. Bring your knees together and sit back on the heels of your feet. If you cannot sit comfortably in this way, you can sit with your legs straight out in front. Mm -hmm. Good. And then you're going to inhale and reach the arms up, touch the palms together. And exhale, relax the arms by your sides and look to eye level. And it's the same thing again. Synchronize your inhale with the arc of the movement. When the hands come together, your inhale is over. Synchronize your exhale with the release of the arms by the sides. When the hands are by the sides, your exhale is over. Again, in, two, three, four, X, two, three, four. Again, inhale, there's sound and there's movement to stillness and silence. Exhale, there's sound and there's movement to stillness and silence. One more, in, three, four, and X, two, three, four. Beautiful. So we're going to bring that same kind of synchronicity to bigger movements. There's one more warm up before we begin with the traditional Surya Namaskar. So come to stand up. Christina, you may have done this with me in class. I can't remember. So just follow along and I'll be doing the demo. Just wanna... I know. It's very difficult to know how to work it with the split screen. But, okay, so stand with your feet together unless your inner knees touch first. In which case, let the inner knees touch and let the feet go straight down from there. You'll inhale and reach the arms out to the sides and up. Touch the palms above the head. As you exhale, bend your knees, sending your thighs parallel to the floor and your torso rests on your thighs. Arms are out to the sides. Inhale, reach forward. Hands to the floor, and then exhale, straighten the leg. Inhale, look forward, gaze out in front. Inhale, fold again as you exhale. So now we'll reverse it. Bend your knees to 90 degrees. Lay your chest on your thighs. Inhale, reach your arms out to the sides. Exhale, reach your arms forward. Inhale, stand up, gaze up, and exhale, arms by your sides. Again, inhale, reach up, touch the palms together and look up. Exhale, bend the knees, rest the belly on the thighs, arms out to the side. Inhale, reach forward, 
And exhale, put your hands on the floor and then fold over your leg. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold completely. Bend your knees, belly on thighs. Inhale, arms out. Exhale, reach forward. Inhale, stand up, gaze up. And exhale, arms by the sides. I'm just going to watch you one time, Christina. Inhale, reach the arms up, touch the palms above the head. Bend the knees to 90 degrees, rest your whole torso on your legs and your arms out to the sides. Inhale, reach the arms forward. Actually connect your chest to your thighs. Lay your torso on your legs, then hands to the floor and exhale, fold. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold again. Reverse it now. Bend the knees, belly on thighs. Inhale, arms out to the side. Lay your chest on your thighs, Christina. It's not chair pose. Lay your chest down. Exhale, arms forward. Inhale, stand up, reach up. And exhale, arms by the sides. Now you watch me once, Christina. You watch me once, okay? Inhale, reach up. Exhale, belly on thighs, arms out to the sides. Inhale, reach forward. Ex hands to the floor, straighten the legs. Look forward, inhale. Fold, exhale. Bend the knees, belly on thighs. Inhale, arms out. Ex forward, right up. And now we'll do one more and then Surya Namaskar. Inhale, reach up. Good inhale sound. Fold forward as you exhale, belly on thighs. Bend your knees. Inhale, stretch forward, strong legs. Exhale, hands to the floor, fold over your leg. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, fold again. Bend your knees, belly on thighs. Inhale, arms wide. Exhale, arms forward. Inhale, stand up, gaze up. Yes, and exhale, arms by your sides. Surya Namaskar, A. Inhale, reach up, touch the palms, see your thumbs. Exhale, fold forward, bow your head, look towards your legs. Inhale, stretch forward, gaze out and front. Hands flat, stepping back. And exhale, lower down. Inhale, arch up, come to the tops of the feet, upward facing dog. Exhale, lift the hips and look toward your inner knees or inner thighs. One, press the floor away, reach long through the sitting bones. Two, breathe wide into your ribs here, not into your belly. Three, keeping the belly toned to the lumbar spine. Four, protecting the lumbar spine and directing the energy upward. Five, step or jump your feet forward. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, fold completely. All the way up as you inhale, touch the palms together. See the thumbs, arms by your sides as you exhale. Two more. Inhale, reach up, touch the palms. Exhale, fold forward, bow your head completely. Inhale, stretch forward, gaze out in front. Hands flat, stepping or jumping back. And exhale, lower down toward your belly. Inhale, arch up, shoulders back, look up. Exhale, lift the hips and bow your head. Long sides, long spine, space between each of the ribs. And then trying to stretch the ribs with every breath. Three, mouth is closed, eyes are open. Four, Sending the breath through the nose. I bend your knees, step or jump. Inhale, look forward, gaze forward. Exhale, fold completely. All the way up as you inhale, touch the palms, see the thumbs, arms by your sides as you exhale. One last time. Inhale, sweep up, touch the palms. Exhale, fold forward, bow your head. Inhale, look forward, stepping or jumping back, exhale, lower down. Inhale, arch up, gaze up, exhale, lift the hips, 
And once again, look toward the inner thighs. Maybe you can even see your waistband if you have one. One, maybe you can look at the seam, the center seam of your pants. Two, keep your eyes open. Consciously look toward one thing. Three, four, the legs do not need to be straight, but straighten the arms. Five, bend your knees, step or jump. When you arrive, inhale, lengthen forward, and exhale, fold completely. All the way up if you inhale, touch the palms, see the thumbs, arms by your sides as you exhale. Bend your knees, inhale, reach up. So now we're taking chair pose. Exhale, fold forward, bow your head completely. Inhale, stretch forward, step or jump back. Exhale, bending the elbows alongside the body. Inhale, come to the tops of the feet and look up. Exhale, lift the hips and ground into your heels. Step your right foot forward, turn your left heel flat. Inhale, reach up, touch the palms and see the thumbs. Hands to the floor, step back, exhale, lower down. Inhale, arch up, gaze up. Exhale, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Left foot forward, right heel flat. Inhale, sweep up, touch the palms, see the thumbs. Hands to the floor, step back. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, arch up, gazing up. Exhale, lift the hips and hold still. So find yourself in downward facing dog, breathing freely. Two, good. Keep reaching longer through your sides. Three, mm -hmm. that's good. That's nice strong legs for you, Christina. Four, one more breath. Mm -hmm. Bend your knees. Step or jump. Inhale, look forward. And exhale, fold. Bend your knees. Inhale, sweep up. Touch the palms. And stand up tall as you exhale. Again, deep bend of the knees. Inhale, reach up. Touch the palms. Exhale, fold forward. And then try to straighten the legs. Inhale, look forward, step or jump back, exhale, lower down, arch up, inhale, lift your hips, exhale, right foot forward, left heel flat, inhale, sweep up, touch the palms, hands to the floor, step back, exhale, lower down, inhale, arch up, every breath the same, Exhale, every movement guided by a breath. Left foot forward. Inhale, sweep up, just as we did when we were on our knees. Hands to the floor, step back. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, arch up, gaze up. Exhale, lift the hips and bow the head. So it's because the mind likes to measure things that we give the mind something even and fluid and ever-changing and ever-present to focus on. So we let the power of the mind measure the breath and let that measured breath guide the movements. And in that way, we focus on what is happening. Bend your knees, step or jump forward. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, fold completely. Deep bend of your knees. Inhale, arch up. Touch the palms. Stand up tall. Exhale. And again, bend the knees. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Bow your head. Inhale, stretch forward. Step or jump back. Exhale, lower. Inhale, arch up, gaze up. Exhale, lift the hips, bow your head. Right foot forward. Inhale, deep lunge, touch the palms, see the thumbs. Hands to the floor, step back. 
Exhale, lower. Inhale, arch up, gaze up. Exhale, lift the hips. Bow your head, left foot forward. Inhale, deeper lunge, reach up higher, gaze to your thumbs. Hands to the floor, step back. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, arch up, gaze up. And exhale. This is the last time we'll hold this for five breaths. So try to be very still in the body, very even in the breathing, and very steady in the gazing. And just keep beginning again. If you wander away from the breathing sound, give it sound. If you fidget in the body, remind yourself to hold still. If you close your eyes, open them again. Bend your knees, step or jump. Inhale, looking forward. Exhale, fold completely. Bend your knees. Inhale, sweep the arms up. And stand tall as you exhale. With that same exhale, hop your feet apart about a foot. Fold forward and hold your big toe with your second and third finger and your thumb. Inhale, squeeze the toe, look forward, and exhale, fold. Make sure you're keeping your sitting bones forward over your heels. If you're not able to do this, bend your knees. Three, relax the upper back, let the elbows bend. Four, shoulders rise up the back. Five, inhale, stretch forward, hold still, exhale. Slide the hands under the feet, ground your wrists, inhale, stretch forward, and exhale, fold again. So there's active energy pulling up the fronts of the legs, there's active energy reaching down the backs of the legs, and you inhale fully and you exhale fully, and you have a complete multi-sensory experience of the breath. Inhale, stretch forward, gaze out in front. Stand up tall as you exhale and hop your feet together. Good, step to the right as you inhale and lift the arms wide to the T. Turn on your heels, right toes out, left toes in. Look down and make sure your heels are in alignment, heel to heel. Then exhale, reach down the right leg and look up to your left hand. One, the front leg is totally straight. Two, if you hyperextend that knee, you can soften the knee a little bit. Three, good. Left shoulder rolls back. Four. Good, inhale, stand up tall. Stretch wide and turn to the left. Exhale, reach down and reach up. And again, make sure it's heel to heel alignment between the feet. One, lengthening the right side seam. Two, the right outer hip. Three, draw the waist in on all sides. Four, inhale, stand up tall, stretch wide, turn back to the right. Exhale, twist. Left hand comes down. Right arm goes up. So try to bring your left shoulder over your left wrist and reach the right arm straight up to the sky. You can bring your hand on your ankle or your shin. You don't need to reach for the floor. One more breath. Inhale. Lift the belly. Lift the thighs. Lift the torso. Stand up. Turn to the left. Exhale. Right hand down, left arm up, and gaze up. One, full breathing. Two, three, strong legs. Straight, strong, four. Lift those thighs. Inhale, stand up tall, stretch wide, square the feet. Exhale, back to the front, and relax the arm. Inhale, open twice as wide to the right. Step wide, lift the arms. Turn your feet to the right, exhale, bend the knee. Right hand outside the foot or right elbow on the knee. Now, if you're taking your elbow on your knee, 
Make sure that you have all the space. Much better, Christina. Bend the knee more. Look to the reaching fingers. And then inhale, stand up tall, stretch wide. Turn, exhale, lunge. Elbow on knee, arm over the ear. Or hand on the floor, arm over the ear. Three, ground through that back heel. Four, ground through your front heel. Inhale, stand up tall, stretch wide, turn to the right, exhale, lunge, and twist. Bring your left elbow outside your right knee thigh, hands in prayer for most. One, two, good, keep bending your front knee and lifting the center of the chest to the prayer. Four, one more. Great. Inhale, stand up tall, really wide open chest, and then turning, exhale, lunge and twist. So try to bring your right ribs outside that left knee thigh. Go as deeply as you can in the twist while still breathing freely with sound. Three. So all the time you want to hear the sound. Four, bend the knee more. Right. Stand up tall. Inhale, wide open chest. And exhale back to the front and relax the arms. Inhale, open to the right. Hold your waist, both hands. So step to the right, hold your waist. Exhale, hands to the floor, fingers in line with your toes. Inhale, look forward. And exhale, fold. Bow your head and rest the head on the floor between the heels of your feet. Three. Good. Bend the elbows toward one another and let them go straight back. Four. That's good. Thighs firm and lifted. Inhale. Look forward. Exhale as you are. Inhale. Strong legs to lift up. And exhale, squeeze your waist with both hands. Inhale, stretch the arms apart. Exhale, hold the waist again. Inhale, fill your chest. And exhale, fold forward and down. Bow your head completely and breathe. One, full breathing. Two, three. Long sides, four strong legs. Inhale, stand up tall. Exhale, squeeze your waist. Stretch the arms, inhale. Interlace fingers behind as you exhale. Squeeze the arms together and inhale. And fold forward and down as you exhale. Reach the arms, reach the head, reach the sides of the body. Good. One, keep your palms pressing together, Christina, to the wrist. Two, good. Think of squeezing the upper arm bones together. Three, and moving the arms to the floor from the upper arm bone. Inhale, stand up tall. Exhale as you are. Hold the waist, last one like this, inhale. Fold forward as you exhale, hold your big toes. Inhale, stretch forward, and exhale, fold. Bow your head, and breathe. One, strong thighs lifting up. Two, lift your shoulders up and move them away from your neck. Three, so you're trying to broaden the space between the neck and the shoulder tip. Four. Inhale, look forward. Hold still, exhale. Rise up tall, inhale, touch the waist, and back to the front as you exhale. Take your hands behind your heart in prayer, or grab opposite elbows behind your back. Step your right foot back three feet. Turn around, face the back. Good. Exhale, fold forward over your right leg, bowing your head to your knee. One, full breathing. Two, try to lift your arm bones up, lift your shoulders onto your back. 
four, that's it. One more breath. Inhale, stand up tall, pivot to the left, and exhale, fold forward, down over your left leg. One, little more strength in your back leg. Two, lift the shoulders up, lift the arm bones up. Three, so like you're opening the center of the chest to fold. Four, that looks good. Bow the head now. Inhale, stand up tall. Square the feet, shoulders on the back, and back to the front as you exhale. We're gonna add a balancing pose today. So hold your left waist and draw your right knee up to your chest. And just hold the right knee. Mm -hmm. If you're comfortable here with a straight left leg, then hold the right big toe and extend the right leg out. And we're just gonna extend the leg out today and stay upright. One, good. Focus on your standing leg. Three, pull the waist and breathe up into the chest. Four, five, draw the knee in, hug the right knee, and place the foot into tree pose. Take your time. Foot against the left inner thigh. Hands in prayer. One. Two. Lift the front of the belly. Three. Good. Four. Inhale the leg to center. Hold the waist as you exhale. Straighten the leg out in front and breathe. One. Hold your waist, Christina, and stand up tall. Two. Three, squeeze the right thigh, squeeze the left thigh, four, and lower down, other side. Hold the right waist, draw your left knee up. Either holding the knee, which is fine, or you hold the big toe, and you extend the leg straight. One, two, plug the left arm and leg in. Three, stand up taller on the right leg, four, Draw the knee in again. Place the foot high up on the inner thigh. Take tree pose as your wide open angle version. One, hands in prayer on the waist. Two, lift the front of the pelvis, lift the lowest belly. Three, four. <laughs> Inhale back to center with the knee. Hold the waist, point the toes and straighten the leg. One, squeeze. Two, push down with the right heel. Three, point the left toes. Four, and stand on two feet. Vinyasa. Inhale, sweep up, touch the palm. Exhale, fold forward, bow your head to your legs. Inhale, look forward. Step or jump back. Exhale, lower down. Arch up as you inhale, look up. Lift the hips as you exhale, bow your head. Come all the way to sit down. So step or jump to sit and extend your legs straight out in front. Good. Hands flat by your hips, shoulders on your back. Look down the length of your nose. One. My ankles are squeezing in, my shins are squeezing in two. My thighs are lifting up. Three, the backs of my knees spreading wide on the floor. Four, reach forward and hold your big toes. What's up? Good, hold your big toes. If you need to, bend your knees to hold your toes. Otherwise, straight arms, straight legs, look up, inhale. And fold forward and down as you exhale. Deep breathing. One. Remember, the forward and down comes from that drawing in of the belly. Two, which supports the lengthening of the torso. Three. And that lengthening is fueled by inhale. Four. One more. Inhale, arch up, gaze up. Exhale, wrap your hands around your feet if you can. You're welcome to hold a wrist beyond the foot. Inhale, arch up 
and exhale, fold forward and down again. One, that's good. Great, Christina, keep breathing your chest towards your knees. Three, literally filling the chest up with inhale so it moves closer to the legs. Four, and on the exhale, the whole back body relaxes and broadens. Inhale, arch up, gaze up, and exhale, sit up. We're gonna go directly to the counter pose. Hands behind you, fingers point forward. If you have a tender back, you'll take it with bent knees. Otherwise, straight legs, toes pointed. Inhale, lift your hips up and drop your head back. Three, roll your thighs in. Four, breathe up and chest. And lower down. Beautiful. Come forward on your mat, cross your shins. Your feet are lifted off the floor. You'll put your hands in front of your butt, but behind your heels. And you'll inhale, try to lift up. Step or jump back. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, arch up, gaze up. Exhale, lift the hips and bow your head. Bend your knees, step or jump through. Straight legs in front. Fold your right leg toward lotus. Place the right foot anywhere on your left thigh that you can. If you can hold the foot in lotus, you reach around back and you reach forward with the other hand. Otherwise, both hands forward. Arch up, inhale, and fold forward as you exhale. One, the heel is pressing up into the left lowest belly. Two, some would argue massaging the sigmoid colon. Three, four, Inhale, arch up and gaze up. Exhale, straight legs in front. We're just gonna switch sides. Fold your left leg toward lotus. Bringing the foot anywhere on top of the thigh is fine. Find your foot if you can and hold your other foot. And here we're massaging the iliocecal valve. Arch up <laughs> and exhale, fold. One. Keep trying to square the torso over the right leg. Two. Keep plugging the arms into their sockets to bring the chest forward. Three, to release strain on the neck and upper back. Four, five, arch up. Inhale and release the legs straight. Exhale, cross your shins. You can always sit the vinyasas out. Inhale, pick up your butt. Exhale, step or jump back and lower down. Arch up as you inhale, look up. Lift the hips as you exhale and look toward your legs. Bend your knees, step or jump through. Straight legs in front. We're gonna fold your right leg back now. Heel outside the hip. So really try to bring the top of the foot, front of the ankle on the floor. You can sit up as high as you need to or even support yourself on your left hand. Otherwise, reach forward and arch up, inhale and then fold forward as you exhale. One, so we're just playing around with the thigh bones position in the hip socket. Two, don't push past your capacity to breathe freely. Three, let the thighs feel grounded as you extend the torso forward. One more breath. Inhale, arching up, gazing up, and exhale, sit up and release the fold of the right leg, extending that leg out. Left side folds back, top of the foot on the floor. Your thigh bones are eventually parallel. You reach past the right foot, arch up, inhale, and fold forward and down as you exhale. One, keep breathing the chest toward the knee. Two, keep breathing the ribs toward the thighs. Three, Shoulders down the back. Four. Inhale, arch up, gaze up. And exhale, sit up. Hands flat, legs are straight, cross your shins. From the belly and the heel of the hand. Inhale, pick it up. Exhale, step or jump back. 
Inhale, arch up, gaze up. Exhale, bow your head, look toward your legs. Bend your knees, step or jump through. Straight legs out in front. Pull the right heel in to the groin and move your knee to the right. This is called Janushirshasana. Reach forward and hold your left foot with both hands. Inhale, arch up, gaze up. And exhale, fold forward and down. Try to knit your lowest belly together, but lengthen it in two directions. Right, pubic bones, lengthen through the legs. Center of the lowest belly rises up under the rib cage. So we have a long, hollow belly drawing into the spine. Inhale, arch up, gaze up. And exhale, release and switch sides. Right leg out, left leg in. Reach forward, cast the right foot. Inhale, arch up, gaze up. And exhale, fold forward and down. Bow your head and breathe. One. Remember, just like in cat-cow, the bowing of the head is at the end of the whole articulation of the spine. So feel the whole spine bowing in the direction of the head. Four. Inhale, arch up, gaze up. Exhale, release. Hands flat, cross your shins. Inhale, draw in to lift up. Exhale, step or jump back. Inhale, arch up, shoulders back. Exhale, lift the hips and bow your head. We try to jump up to jump through. And then lower down. Good. We're going to take a Baddha Konasana, soles of the feet together. Knees apart. Mm -hmm. Remember, with your thumbs, you're opening the feet, trying to get the knees to the floor, not by pushing on your knees. Elbows stay in. Inhale, sit up tall. And exhale, hinge forward, bringing your chest and chin toward the floor. Good. One, shoulders on the back. Two, you can see I'm folding with a flat back. That's what you want. Three. Bend the elbows back, move the heart forward. Four, one more breath. Inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, open your legs wide apart. Make sure you can hold the outer feet by the heels. From this grip, you're encouraging the whole outer leg to draw back toward the outer waist, outer hip. So inhale, look forward. Grounding the outer leg and exhale. Send your chest and chin forward and down. One, good. Two, keep mm, flexing your thighs. Three, and pushing the knees down. Four, or really pushing the length of the thigh bone down and the knee comes down as a result. Inhale, look up and exhale, sit up. Now bring your legs a tiny bit closer together. Tiny bit. Reach your arms out to the sides. Lean back and inhale, lift your legs up to your arms. That's it. Catch the feet, point the toes, and lift your chest up. One, good. Two, everyone's looking up. Three, four, Cross your shins in the air. Inhale, pick yourself up. And then turn forward on your mat, you, and take a vinyasa. Inhale, arch up and gaze up. And exhale, lift the hips and bow your head. Come forward to plank as you inhale and lower all the way to your belly as you exhale. We're gonna make a pillow for our head with our hands. One on top of the other, the elbows are wide. And then you can rest your forehead on the floor. Push your pubic bones down into the floor without squeezing your butt. Lift your navel up a little bit away from the floor without humping your upper back. And squeeze your legs together. As you inhale, lift both legs up, only legs. One, feel your thigh bones lifting. Two, like your legs are lifting from your thigh bones. Three, that's good. Four. And lower down. 
Put your hands by your chest like you're going to do chaturanga. Keep your legs grounded, and we're going to lift to a little cobra. Inhale, lift up. So cobra, keep your floating ribs on the mat. Two, and lift up from the strength of your back. You don't even need your hands on the floor. Three, gaze down the length of the nose. Push the feet down. Four, push the pelvis down. Right from here, upward facing dog. Inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale. Bend your knees, step or jump through, and lay down on your back. We'll do some back bending. Three back bends, and we'll start to unwind. So bend your knees, feet on the floor. You have three options with your back bend. This is actually a back bend, laying on the floor with your knees bent and your feet on the floor. So that's option one. Option two is to lift the hips and wrap your shoulders underneath you. And option three is hands by the ears and inhale, lift up. I press all the way up to straight arms and straight legs. One. Good. Two. Oh, that's great. Three, push down with the heels. Four. And lower down for a moment. And rise back up. All the way up. One. Two, three, four, and lower back down, and rise right back up. Last one, one last big effort of the morning. Two, come on, honey, yes, dig deep, and you fuel that with an inhale. Four, the breath never gets tired. More breath and come on down. Just let the body settle. Enjoy that the heart is beating more. Yeah, that the wrists are not used to it. Right, the whole thing. We're building the strength again. You're not going to use your wrists anymore today, except for if you're going to chop vegetables or fold laundry or, <laughs> or use a pencil <laughs> or type at your computer. <laughs> All right, draw your knees in. Rock up to sit and fold forward over straight legs. So straight legs in front, and I'll fold with you. One. So here you really want to be relaxing your back. So if you cannot relax your back with straight legs, bend your knees and create that chest to thigh connection. Four. Inhale, look forward, and sit up tall as you exhale. Just have our lotuses, we'll breathe and we'll chant, and we'll relax. So fold your legs into full lotus if it's very accessible to you. Otherwise, just a comfortable cross-legged position. You can even sit up on a chair if you need to, yeah? Grab opposite elbows behind your back. Unless you're binding your lotus feet, sit up nice and tall. Inhale, a breath, looking up, and exhale, fold forward and down. One, we're just going to stay in each of these for five breaths for time's sake. Two, shoulders on the back, really lengthening through the chest. Three, bring the sternum away from the navel, the navel away from the pubic bones. Four, the shoulders away from one another. Inhale, sit up tall, backs of the hands toward the knees, thumb and forefinger touch. So make sure you're sitting upright, nice and comfortable. For those people just joining, stay for the breathing and the chanting, and then you can do the physical practice later when the video is over. So the arms are straight, the last three fingers are straight and together, and the thumb and the index finger Connect at the pad. Slide the arm bones into your sockets. Feel that same lengthening down into the pelvis and rising up through the roof of the mouth, the crown of the head. And we're just going to breathe in and breathe out on a four count for a couple of minutes. Inhale, two, three, 
four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Breathing in, two, three, four. Breathing out, two, three, four. Breathing in, three. Again, we're measuring, breathing out. We're using the mind's true nature to focus itself. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more. Inhale. And exhale. Now the hands together. Repeating as you hear. Twa meva mata. Twa meva mata. Chapita Twameva Chapita Twameva Twameva Bandush Twameva Bandush Chasaka Twameva Chasaka Twameva Twameva Vinya Twa meva vinya, dravinam twa meva, dravinam twa meva, twa meva sarvam, twa meva sarvam, mama deva deva, mama deva deva. Come to lay down on your back. We don't have much time left, so I'll let you rest for 30 seconds, Christina. Come lay down. Now, always important to take more rest than 30 seconds, but Instagram's got us on the clock. So let the body drop as completely, as swiftly as you can. As I was saying, it's in the mind's nature to create thought. It's in the mind's nature to turn. The mind is always following the stimulus it receives from the sense organs. The mind itself is also considered a sense organ, so you're following the thoughts in the mind. That's why we try to tether each sense organ to the breathing system so that we give the mind these feedback loops. Is my mouth closed? Is the breath moving through my nose? Does it have sound? Is it filling my lungs? entirely, completely, and then you can respond to what you observe and just keep coming back to it. I don't want the video to shut off without you sitting up, Christina, so draw your knees in and roll to the right. And if it shuts off, we'll come right back on to answer questions. Rising up when you're ready. I'm sorry you worked so hard and to cut your, your rest short. I'm so sorry, Christina, and everyone else. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Erica. That was really special and much needed. So let's see. Lots and lots of people here today. Thank you all so much for joining us. It's really, it's, it's been amazing, Christina. Thank you for that having me. And wonderful, and balancing. Oh, Anyone who has questions uh, will come back in a minute. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. Will Thank you be you doing all. it daily? This, this yoga video will be up for 24 hours. And should and we do Saturday again? Saturday at 5? 
Yeah, that was so, so special. Did everybody uh, think we had a lot of people join us on Saturday? Oh, great. So let's you, We did it at 5.30, or remember? We did it at 5.30 because I had a private at 4, but we can do 5 if you prefer, or 5.30 on Saturday. I think 5.30, in case it's a sunny, beautiful day. People can come in from from their days and finish up with. Oh, someone had a great question about is practice different from day or night? Um, you know, in modern times, since people practice after work, they just want to get their practice in. But yes, you would do more subtle practices at night. You would do more vigorous practices in the morning and in the midday. Same with our digestion, right? We're supposed to be eating our biggest meal at midday and then not feasting at night, not Roman feasting at night, but, you know, modern society shifts that but i saw that question go up really fast that was a good question someone asked this is amazing i found myself staying in certain poses longer because it just felt so good and which pose would be best to strengthen my lower back um yeah so there's nothing wrong with staying in poses longer especially if you're doing a practice of your own design but one of the greatest gifts of this system of practice that we're doing is the evenness that we're trying to cultivate. The even attention represented by the gaze, the evenness, the steadiness of every breath. And so that's why we stay in each pose for five breaths and we keep it moving. We keep it moving after we commit to the situation then we let the situation dissolve and we find ourselves in a new situation and we stay for the same amount of time, whether we like it or we don't like it, whether it feels good or it doesn't feel good. But I would say that if there's a pose you particularly like, you know, hit it up again a little bit later. Like, have a uh, special so, plate. Thank you. Someone just let us know that they don't shut you down after an hour on Instagram. So that's good news. <laughs> So they don't do that anymore. Yay! That's a new that's a new feature. Uh, someone asked, why do I feel nauseous at times? I do okay. all the time, by the way. <laughs> when yeah, I do so yoga. Nausea. Nausea. I mean, certainly the basic things that like your mother might tell you, like, when was the last time you ate? And did you drink enough water? <laughs> and you know, is your bra too tight? Like, you know, things like that. Is, the, is your waistband too tight? But uh, we are manipulating the body's systems. We are squeezing parts of the body and then releasing, you know, those parts of the body. We're twisting, right? We're twisting, we're playing with the equilibrium. But in general, people usually get nauseous from one or two things. Backbending and poses where they're holding their breath. And the reason that the backbending can bring on um, nausea is because you're stretching your diaphragm, which physiologically needs to relax and drop down so you can draw breath in. But instead we're stretching it so it's harder to get it to drop down. And you're also squeezing the adrenals and that can make you feel nauseous. Someone here said, I felt lightheaded today. Yeah, you know, this is a lot of practice. What we did today, Christina practices with me regularly. So she's working herself back. It doesn't show it, but I do. <laughs> That's not true. Um, she's working herself back from the fatigue that she felt fighting the virus. But um, this is a lot. This was a lot. If I can't see you, this is a, a, like a ton of practice. Just the first 10 minutes is enough. And I would recommend to you that if you're feeling lightheaded, if you're feeling nauseous, if you're feeling dizzy, sit and breathe. And join us again. You don't have to shut us off. That's what I call holding space. You know, you create a space holder for, the, for something you can't yet do, but you continue to practice what you can do. And holding the breath is another reason that people can feel dizzy, lightheaded, or nauseous because there's so much to think about. And we usually don't think about the breath because we don't usually need to. But here, we are focusing on that breathing process. Someone asked, I have a hard time staying asleep. Uh, any recommendations? And I would just refer back to Erica's comment about the mind being the seventh sense. It's, it's another sense. And if you don't uh, disconnect all of the work and the anxiety and uh, you know even the television and all the things going on that activate it, the bright lights, 
uh, at least an hour before you you want to go to sleep, it's going to infiltrate your sleep. And this, that's what happens to me. I have terrible sleep while I have um, fatigue. And it was a lot more extreme when I had coronavirus. It continues on, but it doesn't enable me to sleep any better. So my body's fatigued all day, and then I don't sleep at night. So I think a lot of that has to do with the stress that we uh, that we bear on our shoulders and 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 also the exposure that we're giving our minds to you know different things that like the news and work and and, and things yeah. that you know we, we should disconnect from i will say for sleep um no one likes to hear this especially for women over 35 alcohol is no good alcohol is no good for sleep <laughs> <laughs> um, it takes the body a long time to metabolize it. And even if you don't feel like, oh, I just had a drink, I don't feel so drunk or whatever, it can really affect your sleep. It can make you feel really hot on the inside and it can affect your sleep. Also make yes. sure you're taking a nice form of magnesium. Well, except for whatever Christina's drinking, that's fine. Water. <laughs> and the last thing, well, you know, vodka looks just like water. Um, <laughs> the last thing I will say about sleep is take all the electronics out of your room and if you could bear or at least it, turn them all off. Yeah, and if you could bear it, turn the router off in your house. More people than ever seem to be in some way affected by these electromagnetic frequencies and waves. And we're they're and they're like entering us all the time. They're passing through me right now as I stare at this phone and talk to you. So, you know, that's something. Oh, let's see. Something oh, but you know, someone asked for neck and shoulder tension pains. Um, neck and shoulder tension pains can have a lot to do with, with your posture, like your posture, like my daughter Mila, she's 13 and she likes to thrust her head forward and upward. She's a very flexible neck and I'm always putting her head back on and she doesn't feel pain now because she has the nectar of youth, but eventually she's going to have a lot the nectar of, of youth. pain there. But what do you do if you don't have the nectar of youth? Oh, I think you can buy it, Christina. Don't you have some... <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. So, Someone's got to make that. You can actually, you can actually cultivate nectar. Um, it's called ogis, and we're doing it now through practice. Nectar can be cultivated through selfless service, through thoughtful practices, through kindness, through gratitude, and through eating the right kinds of foods that turn into nectar eventually in the body. But someone had a really interesting comment about flexibility, that they're very flexible. What more can they do for the body? I have found the best thing you can do for flexibility is build more strength. Excessive flexibility is weakness in certain parts, like if I'm going for the attachment. So build, build, build strength. Build and I strength think everywhere. Also, this yoga that Erica did is complementary to every workout you do. Someone said, is it, are there certain poses that complement a HIIT workout? And all of these poses complement every workout because you're stretching I do. I love every HIIT muscle. Workout. I love HIIT workouts. Christina knows if you come on retreat with us, I make everyone do fitness in the afternoon. I think it is so important to challenge your body in new ways. I think it's to be like, like to be really winded and shaky is important. And then this is a diagnostic and therapeutic tool to bring evenness and strength to your mind. What happens to your body is like. So, so there's this woman who joins a lot of uh, your lives and she's, she's quite lovely. It always has interesting questions and comments. Jennifer Warden, I wanted to give you a shout out. She's a yoga teacher among many other things. And now she's interested in Ashtanga, thanks to you. Oh, that's so great. I, well, the one thing I would like to say is we classical Ashtanga here, we're utilizing the, the, the principles of the practice called Tristana and all yoga practices are based around this recipe for Kriya Yoga, right? This effort, this awareness and this surrender or humility. So, you know, um, we are using some of the structure of Ashtanga, but remember everyone, yoga is yoga, and it works if you do it. So don't divide your yogas. Whatever you do, do with all that you are, and you will receive benefit. I was a free-form vinyasa yogi for a good 15 years before I shifted to this tradition of practice, and I really try to offer it in a very loving and user-friendly way. 
and uh, to allow people the freedom to tap into it and then not feel that they need to commit to this one tradition or lineage or system of practice to be able to, like it, Christina said so beautifully, to apply it to every other thing you do. When I do my hit classes, I am established in the pose. I am breathing freely. I am steady gazing. You know, when I join my friends for boxing classes, I am doing Tristana. I am doing Kriya Yoga. So. Erica, uh, Farah said, you are wonderful. I feel like you are being my therapist and my yoga instructor at the same time. And I love it. It's so nice. So I have to throw out some of those compliments sometimes because they are very special. And the fact that everyone feels so good to, to offer them up is really, really nice and shows that you received everything out of this that, you know, you should. Yes, and that's not an uncommon feeling. That's why it's so important that the yoga trainings that exist now take that into consideration and really focus on the classical yoga philosophy and study, even the study of Vedanta, that would help teachers navigate the common pitfalls of the human condition. I mean, yoga was, at least myth mythologically, yoga was a gift from Shiva when he saw us all suffering so badly with the drama of life, just like totally wasting the gift of this life with all the drama, he gave us tools, tools to work. I mean, you don't have to like picture like Blue Shiva giving you something, but the idea is that this is a gift to help each of us understand how the mind works, how it shapes our reality, how we can strengthen it, how we can rise out of our tendencies, we can melt our conditioning, right? It is psychological work. Mm -hmm. Someone asked, is it better to sleep on your side or your back? Is there a chanting to do uh, before bedtime? A lot of sleep yeah. questions. You know what's a good song before bed? Lonely is the night <laughs> when your mind... No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's the worst. Okay, that would be the worst one. Um, but you know, he, he knew what he was talking about, Billy Squires. He said, your mind is not your own. Your demons come alive. I mean, it's so great. Um, in yoga, you're supposed to sleep on your right side. <laughs> but I think it's more oh, about... I did not know that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think it's more about um, the, like your pillow, your mattress, your pillow, your sheets, your bed partner, uh, the temperature in your room, the lighting in your room, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I think it's got to find your own, you got to find your own way with that. I mean, I can only sleep on my right because my husband's on my left. And I sleep with my back to him as a, like a sound buffer. Don't most married couples do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but um, chanting, you know, you don't really want to do chanting or meditation right before bed because it does in a weird way stimulate. But you could do that resonant breathing. You could lay in your bed and, and breathe in for four counts and breathe out for four counts. And that's really good. And, you know, just think about what we do for, for babies, you know, give yourself a nighttime routine. Uh, we used to do a bath and then a massage and then soft reading and singing and then caressing and then praying that the baby would go to sleep. <laughs> rituals, bedtime rituals. Yeah, yeah. Oh, another thing is be very, be very of the kind of crystals you keep by your bed. Some crystals are very energizing and I'm not a crystal specialist. So look into that. Well, you are when it comes to your friends and giving them things that are very useful to sleep. Here's my bedside table, and there are my crystals that Erica gave me, and that's all I have there. I love that. I love you. Here's my rose quartz. Love them. Thank you. <laughs> but they 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 do help, and I cleaned them the other day, as you instructed me to. Oh yeah, actually, that's great. That's so great, Christina, because it's a full moon tomorrow night, and if oh. you have crystals, it's a great night to put your crystals out and bathe them in the moonlight, even if it's going to rain. You can put them out. What is the best motivation to exercise and care for yourself? You ready? It's so simple. Your body is changing all the time. And it is the result of what you eat and what you do. So give the best ingredients that you can for the remaking of who you are. So like in, in uh, yoga, they call that the Anamaya Kosha. This outer level of us 
is called our rice pot. It's our rice pot, okay? It is, it is the physical receptacle. And it is 100% the result of what you eat, what you drink, and what you do. So I think it's really helpful for people, at least in terms of food, to remember that the food you eat, the nutrition that you take in through that food, are the building blocks that your body is using to make every single cell. Like, really don't be like, oh yeah, that's interesting. Like, think about that, <laughs> you know? Like, really. And remember, food is medicine. There's a reason why it heals you, but good food is medicine. Let's yes. rephrase that. Not just yes. any food, not processed food, good food, whole foods, fruits and vegetables, like you mentioned. Colors, yeah. Eat all the colors that you can every day. Try to eat a wide variety of things that are grown in the earth to, um, to feed your microbiome. Uh, try to eat things that have not been processed before they came to your house. Um, what else? What else do we like? Someone said, what Is it kind okay of to do yoga while fasting? Well, it yeah. depends on why you're fasting and what kind of fast you're doing. Intermittent fasting? Um, I, I mean, whatever you're accustomed to, it should be all right. You'll probably notice when you're fasting that you feel a little different. Sometimes you can feel more energized. You don't take advantage of that because you'll feel more depleted after the fact. And if you feel less energized, oh, Ramadan, yeah, that's fine because you have probably been fasting since you were a young child and are accustomed to it. The only thing that worries me about Ramadan is that it's also no water. So, um, that's, you know, it, I would say temper your practice, go a little bit easier. And, um, and it's beautiful because you know that these practices are meant to be an offering to the divine inside and outside and a celebration of the gift of the divine breath that blew us alive. So it's probably a really beautiful thing to do during such a lovely celebratory season. Thank you so much, Erica. We're, we're going Let's to- Let's keep talking, uh, I love it. <laughs> okay, well, I've got, I've got time, but I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't want to uh, burden you too much. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, I someone asked, <laughs> do you recommend certain supplements after 50? <laughs> I'll let you know in seven years. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So I'm going to be 43 this, this summer in July, July 12th. I love birthdays. So if you guys are out here uh, and we're allowed to get close to each other, then you can come to my birthday party. Um, I just turned 50. So, <laughs> and the yeah, supplements, I supplements I take are, are daily uh, vitamins, uh, okay. which I started doing before I got sick. Thankfully, they were all helpful while I was sick. And uh, push the virus, you know, out of me, you know, very quickly, considering uh, how long it lasted for my husband. And I think that, you know, you have to talk to your doctor and see what you're missing, what your body needs, uh, especially at 50. That's usually when perimenopause sets in and different things start happening hormonally and uh, your estrogen levels change and you start to get hot flashes and different things are going on. So you, that's a really good time to get a, a checkup. You know what Kylie always talks about? Our friend Kylie from uh, Knockout, Knockout Beauty. Beauty. yeah, Knockout Beauty fame. She speaks a lot about getting a test that sees how well your body metabolizes estrogen and that, that if you're mismetabolizing estrogen, that can lead to a lot of the symptoms associated with the perimenopause and can shift your supplementation. It can all be handled through supplementation. Mm -hmm. Remember when she was talking to me about that, I was like, I want that test. So, you know? so my, fr my friend who's a chef, uh, she is an amazing Ayurvedic uh, chef, by the way, like Corey is. And it, we did a few cooking classes and we're gonna be posting her video soon. She was asking, which daily vitamins? Again, talk to your doctor and see what your body is missing, what it's not producing anymore or producing less of as we get older. We have to start monitoring that, unfortunately. And, yeah. uh, you know, I take a C and a B and a D um, and zinc every day uh, right now. That's good for you, huh? Not such a good student. <laughs> but that will change. You know, it, uh, fortunately, I haven't had any you know, knock on wood, no uh, perimenopause symptoms yet, no hot flashes yet. But I think after Corona, I'm sure it's going to ignite something in my, in my system because that's usually 
uh, it's, it sometimes is triggered by illness like uh, a virus or, or something like that. Yes, I take a great probiotic. I take um, trifala, which is three um, dried fruits mm -hmm. and they're pulverized into powder and then pressed into tablets. It's good to tone the intestinal lining. And uh, then I take immune boosting things. I don't take a uh, vitamin, although I would like to. I do take vitamin uh, D with K, D3 with K2. And uh, I just started taking that NAC that you were taking, Christina. Yes, anacetyl, anacetylcysteine. That is a great precursor to glutathione uh, and an antioxidant, which is really good too, especially when you're shedding a virus like I was in the past um, few weeks. Hi, Dave. <laughs> Dave Sockland's on. <laughs> the milkman. I'm calling you the milkman now. That's your new we, nickname. We go to the same doctor. So I call him often for advice. <laughs> Should I do this? <laughs> this is what she's prescribed. What do you think about it? And he's been oh. very, very helpful during my Lyme disease journey as well. Someone is uh, writing about krill oil. Yeah, krill oil is a fantastic source for essential fatty acids. You just want to make sure you're getting it from a clean source, clean waters. And, and turmeric. Turmeric is a, is, is a great anti-inflammatory. Anti so I add that to soups and smoothies wh whenever I can. Uh, what brand of NAC? I like Thorn, T-H-O-R-N-E, uh, because yeah, it's a nat natural herbal supplements. And um, always the talk to the doctor about any of these. Yeah, oh my gosh, totally. And always, um, when you're using turmeric, Remember that it, it needs to be activated. It works well with black pepper and oil and heat activate it. So like Christina says, she's putting it into things she cooks and it, it, it makes it come alive with its anti-inflammatory properties. Hello, Texas in the house. <laughs> Lyme disease, oh, that's for another day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that's like a week long live. But, but just to echo what uh, Erica said about food, good food is medicine. Uh, whatever you're going through, whatever illness, whether you're perimenopause or menopause, if you're in your 40s, you should probably think about what you're eating if you're experiencing menopause or perimenopause uh, because that can really, um, it can really give you, you immune support and, and help you be your best self uh, as you're entering more more difficult uh, phases uh, of your life, but food, 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 good food is the best. Sleep and this yoga obviously helps a lot. Someone was complimenting um, how young we look, but you know there are like all sorts of filters on these phones. So <laughs> I'm not using a filter, but I do use a lot of products and a daily regimen from Knockout Beauty. I will always give them a shout out because I have so yeah. many creams. Me too. On my face. Uh, but I will say non toxic skincare is totally is, non toxic. Yeah. Because your skin is your largest organ. So you need to protect it and feed it um, nutrients. Knockoutbeauty.com. There, right? there are a lot of uh, comments about hot flashes. So there are a couple of foods that are cooling pomegranate extract, cucumber, mm. and aloe vera water would be cooling. Cooling. That's a good idea. So. And mint. Someone said we look like sisters. I love it. <laughs> I love being your sister. Sometimes we pretend we're sisters when we go out, if we ever get to go out again. <laughs> Only when they ask, are you sisters? We say, well, yes, of course we are. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's saying hello from Kochi. Hello. Super <laughs> hello. Wow. So wonderful to have so many special people here. Yeah. Asking amazingly intelligent questions, thoughtful questions. Hello to Australia, Maryland, Canada. We appreciate you so much coming to do some uh, yoga or resonance breathing or just for our Erica's post-yoga uh, post Q&A. Um, what was I going to say, Christina? Maybe people can, can let you know if they want us to add. Like I was thinking we could add just breathing exercises and like neck, head and neck stretching. A lot of people have been talking about pressure in their head so we can depressurize the head and do some breathing practices and a long resonant breathing, be like a 20 minute program. We could do that some other day, maybe after work one day. 
Okay, so that would be great. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write sex. Why would I write sex? For anxiety, I think. Sex, <laughs> sex for anxiety or to, their to, to treat sex. their anxiety. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or we're supposed to have sex. Are we supposed to have sex? <laughs> uh, these are K dear. Eric and I love these. We both have them in different colors. Our leggings. They're awesome. And they're very comfortable too. I do love those leggings. What do you recommend for migraines, Erica? Oh, that I would recommend, depending on how old you are, I would recommend that estrogen metabolism test, actually. Uh, and then I would look into the way your head is positioned on your neck. But like an old, like an old rule of thumb with head pain, is this webby portion between your thumb and your index finger, it's really, it's really a great place to relieve pressure. Like, let me see if I can show you better what I'm doing. And you, and you, when you squeeze in there, you should be able to uh, alleviate early, early migraine, right? If you're in the throes, there's nothing you can do but ride it out. Right. And then acupuncture would help. But um, what about neck, head, neck and head stretches? Um, it's more, it would be more like I was saying about Mila, like if there's someone who thrusts their neck forward all the time, it would, I'd have to see them and then teach them how to get their head back on. I would look into a better pillow. Um, and you probably would want to sleep on your back, I think. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, the one thing we know for sure is that each and every one of us is so totally individual that that's why nutritional science is so broad. That's why religions are so broad. That's why everything is so broad because you've got to lean into the thing that is, is feeding you specifically. So do you just think the resonance breathing helps the migraines as well? I, I do think that that actually works across the board. I think the resonance breathing and I'm, I practice TM. I'm also a really big fan of TM. Um, I just have found it to be exceptionally helpful in reducing transcendental meditation. Yes. Trans Someone said Reiki. If you have access to that, obviously that would, yeah. that would be nice. I think acu acupuncture and acupressure also help with sleep and pressure in the head. Someone keeps writing sex. I don't know. Is that an invitation? <laughs> well, sci scientifically, you know, the endorphin release certainly helps. So yeah, that would probably help. <laughs> it's true. I was reading a very interesting book, though, called Come As You Are, and it turns out that, um, that um, everyone has a different stress response to sex. So even that can be exceptionally healing and liberating and freeing and rejuvenating for some. And for others, it literally is like the furthest thing. And then you get into a, an issue when you're in a relationship and you're both under stress and one of you needs to have sex to release the stress and the other one needs for you to stop touching them to release the stress. <laughs> and, and it's like... <laughs> Someone <laughs> keeps mentioning the pillow guy. I don't know who the pillow guy is. Huh. Oh, I have to look into that. I don't know. I got, my, I got my latest pillow because Howard Stern said his wife liked this pillow called I Love My Pillow. And so I got it and I effing love that pillow. <laughs> what's so it made of is it a down pillow is it a down pillow or is it no, it's, a home it's, pillow? Like, it's like eco synthetic to and it's like a tempurpedic style but not so extreme because i find those to be a little rough on my but i just want to say if howard oh, mike liddell it, okay thank you I'm, for sharing I'm, that i'll look I'll it do up a, uh, i'll do a um howard stern live yoga <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. We we welcome we welcome all parties to yoga. Yes, <laughs> Republican yeah. and Democrats. <laughs> so well, just in in general, I just think it um, helps everybody right now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so someone who has uh, COVID right now is experiencing uh, heavy chest and back pain. So get out of your horizontal position. One thing my husband did was move, walk around a lot throughout the day. Do not lie down. You don't want that kind of pressure in your lungs and it, and it, uh, it enables the liquid more re easily to go into them. So you want to get up, you want to walk around and you want to do breathing exercises. Erica does uh, and has done in the last few weeks some amazing resonance breathing exercises and lung expanding exercises with us because I, when I went through it, I was having um, chest pains 
and back pain and it it really helps what else do you recommend there um, there's a great breathing exercise called three part breathing we've done that together as well and it's when you think of your torso as being divided into three parts so there's the upper chest like let's say above the nipples and the throat is the upper chest there's mm -hmm. the middle chest which is the majority of the rib cage and then there's the lower chest which is the belly and the sides and the back and what you do is you try to breathe in to each of these three areas. So inhale, 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 and really puff up, and then exhale all the breath out. And you would do that several times and then reverse it. And if that's strenuous, which it might be if there's a lot of pressure in your chest, you would just do each individual part three or four, you know, just trying, just trying to fill here, mm -hmm. just trying to fill here, just trying to fill here. And you know what is, we'll do that. We'll do that next time, Christina, we'll do that. That three part breathing is very relaxing, very subduing. And also helps with sleep and a lot of questions about sleep earlier. So try to go back to this video will be up uh, for 24 hours and listen to some of the great advice Erica gave for sleep uh, aids. What, that Billy Squire song? <laughs> <laughs> Except for that one. <laughs> Will you sing for us again on our way out? <laughs> oh, should we, do, should we do the Twameva? Or you want me to sing the Billy Squire? <laughs> <laughs> Twameva. is the night <laughs> when your mind is not your own. How about some Blondie? <laughs> Blondie, no, no, no. Erica, who are you wearing? I know, I love this. So I'm hoping that, that they'll send me one. Um, this is a one. I thought you were wearing, it's not Beyond Yoga? No, they, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for some Beyond Yoga. Oh, this, okay. Is, okay. Um, this is called um, Ernest Leotti. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, mm -hmm. but they have beautiful, beautiful fabrics and they have these one piece suits. And um, if you've ever come to my yoga class, you know, I don't want anyone fussing with their clothes. You try to get rid of all of the distractions that you can because the internal distractions are, are limitless, right? Are, are infinite. So you, if you're wearing a shirt and pants, I always make you tuck your shirt in and pull your pants up really high, <laughs> put your hair back. And, you know, so I, I prefer I, those onesies too. I just, more, they're just more comfortable. I, don't, I left them all in, in uh, um, pretty, let but me see. I'll, I'll type the brand in. Uh, <laughs> Can you spell the brand? Uh. Now I will tell you it's pricey and the, the two jumpsuits I have, one was given to me as a gift and the other I bought on sale. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that, but it is pricey and um, it's also maybe worth it. I don't know. Like it depends on, you know, what you can, can do. Um, but I think it'd be fun to wear this out <laughs> with heels. With a skirt. With a skirt. Yeah, exactly. If we ever get to go out again. All right. Thank you everyone so much. Uh, please uh, join us on uh, our weekly 10.30 a.m. yoga class uh, that Erica is so gracious uh, to lead. And also we'll be doing hopefully another one on Saturday. Yeah. Around five around five thirty. I'll we'll post about it, correct? Okay. Yeah. We're gonna post about it and it's gonna be maybe half half of it dynamic practice and then we'll do twenty minutes of really good pranayama breathing exercises. And for those of you who are just joining us, we're wrapping up a yoga session, a breathing session, and a little Q&A with our amazing Ashtanga yoga teacher, Erica Hallowell. Please join us every week, 10.30 a.m. This video will be up for 24 hours on my Thank Instagram you, live. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Love Christina. you. Namaste. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye, sweetie.